Hello and welcome to this movie. Uh, welcome on the Dieshof here. I choose to make this video in English to reach a larger audience. It's all about how to conserve chilies. If you have plenty of chilies, which we had this year, uh, many, many kilograms of hot chili peppers, uh, it's a challenge how to preserve them so that you can use them the whole year. And I show you in this video 10 different ways uh, to preserve chilies in all different uh, fashions. Okay, here we are. Let's start with the easiest way to conserve chilies for the winter time is just put them into pots, bring them inside the house on a place where it's not too warm but enough light and you see here full of rocotto chilies they will ripen now one after the other this one here is going to be soon ready yesterday I have harvested a beautiful red one so I think that's the easiest way to preserve chilies for the winter time bring them into the house cool place, enough light, you have maybe to fight against uh, some insects, but uh, normal, normally it works quite well. Drying is one of the oldest methods to preserve chili. Here we use a device, it's called Durex in Switzerland. It, uh, is basically a fan, the white thing on the bottom and on top you have those sieves, you can stack them up to 10 and on these sieves you spread whatever you want to dry, here in our case the chilies, but you can use it for herbs, uh, beans, whatever you like. You can keep the chilies as a whole uh, put them in a glass but what we do also here is grind them down to chili flakes or a very hot chili powder again by the use here of this uh, Nutri Bullet machine and it works surprisingly well uh, in a few moments you have a very nice powder and you can use it for many things in the kitchen so smoking is really fun, but what you need is a smoker. You can build one yourself or you Google for it. There are many devices available on the market. Basics uh, are very simple. You make a little charcoal fire in, in it. Uh, you put some soaked hardwood on it to create the smoke and you leave the chilies a few hours in that smoke. That's it. Might be necessary that after smoking you put them uh, still for some more hours out in the air to dry out till they are really crisp. So and this is how the final result looks like. Here we have these chili flakes. Yeah, ground to a yeah, medium coarse powder. And those here are the smoked chilies. Let's see. <coughs> wow! <coughs> A very nice smoky flavor. <coughs> Fantastic. But this stuff is really strong. <coughs> to make a raw sauce, uh, you just need a blender like this Nutri Bullet thing. It works quite well. So let's look for the top. We fill in chilies. Uh, for a raw sauce, you add, add uh, lime juice, salt, uh, spices. Basically that's it. Instead of lemon juice, you can also take vinegar, white vinegar. 
The trick with a raw sauce is that you create an acidic environment and that will keep the sauce fre uh, fresh. <coughs> and the acidic environment uh, hinders the growth of bad microbes, yeasts, bacteria and so on. These here are the fermented chilies, so they have enough liquid. Let's try how it works. That's it. So you can dilute it to the kind of liquidity you would like. This is thicker now than Tabasco. Bit creamier. Let's see. Looks great. Making a hot sauce is actually quite simple. Chop the chilies, uh, you put them into liquid, which is composed of water and something which gives acidity, so lime juice or lemon juice or vinegar, and sugar and salt. So those things are blended in a way taste. The trick with a good hot sauce is that you add some fruit to give a really fruity flavor. Fruits like mango, peach, apricots are fantastic. You can also take some tomatoes that gives some viscosity uh, to the sauce and some yeah, nice fruity body. The whole sauce is cooked for some time, half an hour. You can uh, go with a blender through it to, to make uh, small pieces and then you fill them hot into glass jars. That's it. So now let's make a chili oil. For a chili oil it's important that you never put raw fruits under the oil because the danger is there that uh, dangerous bacteria develop which cause uh, sometimes deadly uh, disease called botulism. So to avoid this either you dry you take dry chilies in the form of a chili powder like here or you put the chilies uh, under vinegar for let's say one week so that they really soak in vinegar that disables the growth of bacteria. But here we go for the for the uh, <coughs> it's really hot really hot powder. We go for the powder version put the powder in the bottle here I have vegetable oil this is a rapeseed oil from Switzerland it's as simple as that. Here we are. Wow. Looks already great. <laughs> That's rich. In a few days we may filter off uh, the chili powder and the seeds and at that time the oil will have a beautiful reddish color but I think it's no damage to leave also the chili in. It will settle sediment at the bottom. Uh, the chili oil is great let's say on soups you form nice red eyes on the soup 
Uh, for for some uh, uh, dishes, it just adds a, a special flavor. Fits better than the 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 aqueous chili sauces. So in Italy, this is very popular. You have it in many restaurants. You they, you have kind of a preparation of chili flakes and oil to put over the pasta and things like that. Okay. I tried the hottest chili in the world, Bucciolocchia. <coughs> to make a chutney is actually quite close to making a hot sauce, but here uh, you add more fruits. It's like a marmalade or a jam uh, with fruit, with a lot of sugar, but you add some vinegar to, to achieve this sweet, sour flavor and you add chilies to give the right spiciness to it. On the internet again you find hundreds if not thousands of recipes for all kind of different chutneys. We think it's a great way uh, to go with meats, with sausages, cheese and so on and you can really pimp up your meals with some nice colorful spots of chutney. The whole lot of uh, glasses, vessels. It goes into a device uh, which is called here the WEC. It's actually a pot of water uh, kept to 90 degrees by a thermostat and you put in the closed glasses and it sterilizes things so you can keep it basically for quite the relish is actually quite close to a chutney but as we do it uh, it's not on a fruit basis but on a vegetable basis so let's say you make a relish out of cucumbers or onions or egg fruit or even stuff like cauliflower and the other big difference is you add oil so while a chutney is a purely uh, a water based system here it's more in the way like a mayonnaise is made so in that sense that it is oil and water vinegar maybe one to one so that gives a, a more pasty a consistency uh, so we make it uh, quite thick and we think the oil uh, helps the release of different flavors into the whole uh, preparation. I pack all the chilies now tightly into this glass. The plan is to leave as little space as possible, otherwise we need too much of the, of the vinegar solution. The next step I will pour in boiling water just to disinfect everything and then I will fill in the boiling vinegar sugar solution and then it goes into the, the what we call the VEC apparatus where the whole thing will be sterilized 90 degrees Celsius for, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes, something like this. Okay, this here is my uh, vinegar solution. Spices in, 
uh, fennel, onions, this kind of stuff. I use this as a stock. I add more vinegar, sugar, and that will go into this jar. So here we have the cooking uh, vinegar, the jar with our chilies. Fill it in. So, and finally, the last uh, way is fermentation. Fermentation means that vegetables ferment under the exclusion of air, under the action of lactic bacteria, into a very well tasting, slightly acidic uh, food. So this is the original way uh, to make uh, like the fermented cucumbers, pickled cucumbers. Uh, all, the acidity, all the acidity which develops is the action of this lactic bacteria and it's not by the addition of vinegar. If you want to learn more about fermentation, I really uh, I recommend you buy the book of Elis Katz. He's the Pope of fermentation and through him I discovered this uh, kind of lost art and uh, all the fermented foods are said to be extremely healthy. They are probiotics helping uh, our gut system to, to re-achieve uh, a good balance of microbes, healthy microbes, and the studies show more and more how important this is for our health. The process is, is very simple. You just put the chilies into a jar and uh, you cover them with a salt brine uh, and you close it uh, in a way that all the chilies are really submerged in that brine and you let it just happen. This is how the ferment looks after three months. Uh, we have the development of some white uh, uh, bacteria on top. That's no problem, we can skim them off. Uh, flavor is fantastic so it's ready to make a hot sauce out of it